Hi, my name is Paul Hansen. This video is about arpeggios. Arpeggios are the notes of a chord played one at a time. Now there's lots of ways to play arpeggios on a guitar, but we're going to use sweep picking. So first of all, let me give a little description of how to sweep pick. Sweep picking is kind of a way of picking a lot of notes without a lot of right hand motion. Um, we pick, and I'm picking up on the high E string, and the pick is following through and then bumping into the B string without stopping. Then I can push it the rest of the way through the B string, and then it comes up to rest against the G string. So basically what I'm doing is keeping my motion going straight, straight up without stopping. Okay, we can do that the opposite way too, of course. Maybe pushing the pick through the G string and coming up to rest on the B string, okay? The reason I explain this is that this will, um, help you keep from picking separately on each string. You know, if it, you don't want to do this. We want to make the pick follow through. Now, with the sweep picking, uh, we're also going to, of course, do some stuff with our left hand. So let's move over to the left hand. I'm going to play an E minor chord. That would be uh, ninth fret on the G string, eighth fret on the B string, and, and B on the high E on the seventh fret. And I'm going to sweep down. So each finger is going to play only only one note at a time. Now if I hold all fingers down, that's a problem, it becomes a chord. So we have to play just one finger at a time. Now I can reverse that, of course. Okay. One exercise that helped me out a lot in uh, uh, sweeping up is this one where I picked down on the high E string. And then I followed it with a sweep across this, it's an E minor chord. And you can move that up the scale. You don't have to play it all the way up, but this is, should give you something to work on your sweep picking with. You can reverse that, go like this. Okay, let's move to uh, what an arpeggio what an arpeggio is. Now, arpeggios, like I said before, are the notes of a chord played one at a time. Okay, so let's understand a little bit what chords are so that then we can know what arpeggios are as well. Chords are built from usually the major scale. They can be built from other scales as well, but we're gonna just use the major scale here. Let's take the G major scale right down here. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then it starts over G, A, B, C, D. Okay. Now we can build a chord starting on the first step of that scale. That would be a G chord, right? Because G is the first step. Uh, now remember this formula. It's very simple. Chords are built in thirds. In other words, chords are built using every other note. So if we take the first note, G, skip the second note, A, take the third note, B, skip the fourth note, uh, C, and take the fourth note, D. In other words, we're just taking every other note. G, B, and D. Now if I play G, B, and D on virtually any instrument, including bagpipes or accordion, um, we have a G major triad, or just a G, the G major triad would usually be called just G. You could say G major. Now on guitar, a lot often we will double notes. For instance, we could play G here, here, and here with this bar chord. So we have actually tripled three Gs, two Ds, one B. So we're playing more than one notes, but really only G, B, and D in different octaves. Okay, um, now we can also build a chord starting on the second step, which would be A, right? A is the second step, we use the same for formula. We take every other note starting from A. So we skip B, which is next note after A, and then we take C, skip D, and take E. So we've got A, C, and E. And a, a, C, and E equal an A minor chord. So um, we don't have time to completely go into this, but if you build a chord on each step of the scale, you get a certain formula. Always the one chord is major, the two chord is minor, the three chord is minor, the four chord is major, five chord is major, six chord is minor, seven chord is diminished, and then the, the one chord again. So it goes major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major, and that's important to remember. Okay, now to arpeggios, finally, we get to it. 
Um, we could play an arpeggio just by taking this G bar chord and playing that, but that's not a real creative way. So, um, one of the ways I like to do it is take the traditional chords that you learn when you're first playing guitar, like a D chord, for example, and slide them to different locations and use those shapes to build arpeggios. So we'll take D. If we slide D up here to the seventh fret, then we have a G chord. And I'm going to double, like I did with this bar chord, I'm going to double the D note. But it's still just G, B, and D. And you get... Or... And you can get a gig at a ballpark doing that. Anyway, so now let's build the two chord in the key of G. We're going to do that same thing, only with arpeggios going up the... the the major scale with chords, we're going to use arpeggios though. So the one chord is G. Let's take a D minor shape and slide it up here. Now it becomes an A minor. And I'm going to descend to make it more interesting. So one chord ascending, two chord descending. Let's go to three chord, which is minor and ascend. So I go all the way up the scale. And if we were playing those, we don't always have to play them in order. We can mix them up. Okay. Now, let's try another chord shape. We use D. We could also use a C chord. If we slide it up to here, put a little capo there, we have a G chord as well. So I'm going to play the same thing, one finger at a time. Remember, we're sweet picking. And then here... I'm going to double the uh, D note twice, okay? And then we'll go to the two chord, A minor. And we're using that same scale, one chord major, two chord minor, three chord minor, four chord major. Now, of course, we don't have to play those in order either. We could play any any one of those arpeggios, and they're all built from the from the G major scale because chords are built from major or scales, and that's what we did right here. Um, let's do one more thing. We can combine these shapes because actually the the top half of the C shape is actually a D shape. <laughs> So let's say we take the four chord and the five chord in the key of C, that would be G, I'm sorry, the key of G. That would be G, A, B, C. So we're gonna take a C chord and a D chord, and they're both major. The four and five chord are major. So here's a C. Now at the top of the, uh, the D chord, I could just stop right here on the G string and slide back down. Now I'm playing the D shapes. At any point, I could continue down the rest of the way. And I could move up using that, that system through all the arpeggios. Okay, next, here's an important question. Um, how do you use arpeggios while you're soloing? Well, it's as simple as this. I mean, there's a lot of different ways, but this is a simple way. Since all those arpeggios were built from the G major scale, then if we're soloing using the G major scale, you know, we could use any one of those seven arpeggios in our solo. So if we're soloing along, we could also go into the arpeggio. And they all work. All seven of those arpeggios are built from the G major scale. So if we're playing the key of G, they'll all work. Okay, 
one more step, one more thing. If we're playing in the key of E minor, we're also playing in the key of G. That's called relative minor. And if you're not familiar with this stuff, you might want to study up. Um, there's every major scale has a minor, a relative minor. That just means that, for example, if we're playing in the key of C major, for example, all the white keys on the piano, all those white keys are also in the key of A minor. If we're in the key of G major, we're also in the key of E minor. Bottom line is that you can use all those G major arpeggios we just did in the massively used E minor uh, key, okay? Now, let's see. I've got a progression here that, that is a pretty simple E minor progression. Um, a friend of mine, Pete Evans, a real good guitar player, and I came up with a bunch of progressions a while ago, and uh, this one's real simple. It um, has based around E, and it goes to the four chord A at a certain part. So uh, let me use, and I'll demonstrate some of those C and D shape arpeggios over this progression in the key of E. If any of these things are going like phew over your head and a little too fast, you might want to get out the booklet that comes with the video and follow along. Everything's written clearly and precisely in tablature as well as notation. Um, another thing I just want to briefly say is that there's two types of phrasing that I kind of make a distinction between even phrasing even meter phrasing and floating meter phrasing. In, in other words, with even meter, you're going to play 16th notes, 8th notes, triplets, things that fit evenly into the time, like uh, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E. Um, and then with floating meter phrasing, that's basically where you just play as fast as you want. <laughs> so you can do that, both types of phrasing with this. Um, with these arpeggios and just make sure if you're floating to try to keep some semblance of the rhythm and where where the beat is cruising along okay I have several philosophies on learning and one of them is this um, for example let's say have you ever practiced something like for six months or a year and it didn't get better well <laughs> If, you, if that's happened to you, then you're normal, okay? One of the things I've found to help you get over that is to keep trying new things. But what I think happens is when you practice something, you can't do it. Every time you practice it, you reinforce your subconscious back there that you can't do it. In other words, by not being able to do it, you reinforce that you can't. So I think, think now, now, don't get me wrong, I think you should practice fundamentals and basics, but it's good to change things and vary them and do small little minute changes. And so as you're learning these arpeggios, go ahead and feel free to add pull-offs and take pieces of them and practice just small bits of them, as well as the whole big uh, thing I'm giving out. Okay, this uh, next idea is uh, based around one that... that uh, He's kind of influenced by a friend of mine, Mike Ward, and he, uh, he was doing this a long time ago, and I remember I, I took it and developed it and made a few, you know, added a few things to it. Uh, let me play it first so you can hear what it is. So it's basically, it's basically C sh shapes, but it's a little bit different, like what I was talking about. It, if you're having trouble with the other one, maybe this will work out a little bit better. So the idea is, here we'll take an A minor, 
and the idea is you skip the C note on your way up. Skip that note and go straight to E and then pull off. Okay. So your right hand is just making a straight sweep all the way across the uh, strings um, without having to do any alternate picking or, or anything at the top on the high E. Then you come back down to the G string and then we're going to slide down to the next arpeggio and then go back up, skipping the, the uh, B note this time and pulling off to it and then coming down a G major arpeggio. Okay, and I found this little neat little thing you can add on to that. This idea like... And uh, let's say you're going up that C, that A minor. And then I just moved... And played all the way through all the chords in the key of G, for example. Now I could start with it with an E minor arpeggio, which is the sixth chord in the key of G. Remember, G A B C D E. Sixth chord is an E minor. So, or I could go back down. So they're interchangeable. Another thing that I like to add on to that is this uh, one um, kind of in the vein of a Russ Parrish lick, another real great guitar player. I have a lot of friends who are real good guitar players. And I learn a lot of things from, from other guys and then I change them around and, and I think that's how it works when you're, when you're learning. You learn a little bit from this guy, a little bit from that guy, a little bit from that guy and you put them all together to create your own own style. Anyway, this Russ Parrish idea kind of, uh, I took it and moved it up the neck. It's basically like that. Now, if I add that on, well, let me explain it just so you see it slowly. If I do it right here, I'm using that G chord, the D shape again. And then I'm sliding, sliding right here, up to the high E, pull up, and then pull up, and then down the A minor, which is the D minor shape, up here. So, now if I add that on to the, that other idea, it gets kind of convoluted and complicated. But And of course, all those will work in that E minor progression. So let me play those basically slowly in an even meter over the progression. So far, we've just been doing 
chords built with three notes. Those are called triads. Okay? You can also build four note chords. If we build, for example, a G um, major seven chord, then we would take the root, you know, skip the, the second, take the third, G, B, and then take D, and then we take the seventh note. Okay? That's called a seventh chord. Notes with four chords built in thirds, I'm sorry, chords built with four notes are called seventh chords because they have the first, the third, the fifth, and the seventh. Okay? Let's try building an E minor seven. That would be the sixth chord in the key of G major. Okay? E minor seven. And we're just going to use three strings. Okay? So what I'm going to do here, this is like what we did right at the beginning of the video, only I'm going to add an upstroke right at the top uh, on, the, on the seventh. It's actually flat seven, it's a D. And that's on the G string, D on the, on the seventh fret. I'm gonna pick up and then sweep down across you know, the uh, ninth fret, eighth fret, seventh fret, one finger at a time. Upstroke, setting up the down sweep, and then pick up. So I get the... Um, now if I go to the next chord in the key of G major, it's gonna be an F sharp minor seven flat five, which is a big, <laughs> big uh, name, but it's not that big of a deal. And I'm going to descend, so here, so I pick down, or I can just slide and pull up. So, move to the next one. There, I just moved up the one, the uh, G major scale starting on E, and actually E is the relative minor, so if you're thinking of the relative minor, then I'm really starting on the one chord in the key of E minor, which are all the same chords in arpeggios as, as G major. So I can move those. All the way down the neck, and we get this nice little seventh chord kind of thing. Now those are in the key of G major. Now I came up with a neat idea. In, in any major key, there are three minor seven chords um, in in that key. The two chord, which would be A minor, A minor in the key of G. The three chord, which would be B minor, and the six chord, which is E minor. So, and this is. Um, it, it seems to me that this lick or a lick like it is on some Steve Vai record. Um, so maybe he was doing it before me. I, I, don't, I don't know. So the idea here, I'm going to pick up and do the, the uh, E minor. Same thing we did here, only all the way up here. Then I'm going to slide to the two chord in the key of G and come down, play an octave below the E. So. Then we get this big, cool looking thing. I played at the beginning of the video. Now, um, these slides are kind of difficult, but the thing is, after you practice them for a little while, you start getting used to them, and they're not too bad. Keep, keep an eye on your little finger, because that's the, the finger that you're, is going to be the, that's going to play the first note that you go to when you move. And here you keep an eye on the first finger. So um, now I added to that plain, I mean, if you want to try something that's really a challenge, um, here I go from E to uh, A minor, E minor 7 to A minor 7, then C major 7 to F sharp minor 7 flat 5, and then E minor, B minor 7, A minor 7, G major 7. So, Play that real slow. Now I'm kind of slopping it up a little bit with the rhythm. I, 
the way I'm playing it is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. At least I'm trying to play it that way. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Which works real well. Okay. And the, those licks are real good if you're up on stage and there's people 60 rows back. And if they see your hand moving big distances, they know you've got to be good. Okay, so let's uh, move on. And uh, you know what? I'll demonstrate those over the E minor progression as well. Let's do that right now. Okay, let's do one more arpeggio idea. This one's really neat. This is a real cool one. I originally got the idea from a friend of mine, another friend of mine, Kei Morioka from Japan, and I think that he got the idea from uh, Jason Becker or Marty Friedman or both of them. Anyway, wherever it came from, it's a real neat lick. And he was calling it circular arpeggios, and uh, I added a few things onto them. Um, so they basically, they basic well I'll, I'll show you what it, what it is first um, if we play let's say B minor which is the th the three chord in the key of G B minor we can do it like this and the, the notes basically follow a circle or an oval or football shape I'm doing here I'm starting on B pulling off to F sharp going to D going back to B F sharp D just B F sharp and D right B D and F sharp are the three notes in a B minor triad down to B sliding to D F sharp B D F sharp and back up and there happen to be 12 notes 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so that divides into three real well, so these work out well as being triplets, these type of arpeggios. One, two, three, 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 one. Now, if you want to move to another arpeggio, uh, one place you could do it is when you slide back up with your little finger. Let's say you slide just up to C, which is the third, minor third, and the A minor chord. want to play a major chord, we just raise the third. So B minor, A minor, and G major, the three chord, two chord, one chord, and the key chord. Oops. Now, another thing that's neat to do is uh, make figure eights out of them. And basically the idea there, I'm gonna get the little finger here, I'm gonna slide down, and then go up this B chord right here. So, and then picking on D, sliding back up. So, Those are all the notes from a B mi minor triad. B, B, D, and F sharp. Okay, uh, another thing, figured out how to come back around and basically make three loops. Same thing. Now, as I'm sliding down here, I'm not going to a note. I'm just sliding and then starting on, on the uh, D string. And then I go down to this chord shape, little finger, sliding, okay, and then I work my way back up. I'll play the whole thing real slow. You might want to look in the booklet and follow in the tablature. If 
I go to A minor, I accidentally went to A major there. Okay, so I'll um, use these circular or looping arpeggios over the rhythm track. Okay, that's about all we have time for. There are a lot more ways to play arpeggios, and we've basically just touched the tip of the iceberg. Uh, so keep trying new things, and, and you can change around some of these ideas and add them and, together and mix them up. Uh, remember the first rule of music, though, practice makes perfect. There's a couple of books I'd like to recommend, and they're going to be shown right after the credits, and uh, so check them out. I'll see you later.